Okay, alright. So, the Nintendo Direct, Direct just ended. I don't, I don't know how to feel. Um, <laughs> like, there was good stuff there, but there was just a con- Okay, you know what? There's, there was just a constant flow of farmer games being announced at this Direct that I think has people not liking the Direct because of the flow of announcements. The, the announcements of these games that was in the Direct was just so weird. The way that they got announced, the flow was definitely not a typical Nintendo Direct, uh, where, you know, typically Nintendo puts some of their stuff every now and then. It, it was like Nintendo saved most of their their own games towards the end of the Direct, but let's go ahead and talk about some of my highlights from the Nintendo Direct, how I feel uh, towards the Direct and all that good stuff. By the way, my name's Monado Max. I don't think I said hi. How's it going, everybody? Monado Max here. So obviously, the Direct opened up with a new Fire Emblem game. This was the new Fire Emblem game that got leaked months ago that we did a video on that I'm surprised that a lot of people forgot that this game got leaked. <laughs> I was in the call with people, and uh, when we talked about it in our Direct prediction video, nobody saw the leak. Everybody forgot the leak except me and Itachi. Uh, I thought it was very interesting. I, I guess Nintendo did a very good job of making people forget about that game. It's gonna come out January uh, of next year, which is very surprising because typically Nintendo usually takes January and February off most times. If they release anything within those two months, it's typically a port that they Go ahead and release. So I was actually surprised to see like a huge Nintendo game coming out in January. So that's coming out in January. It's gonna have the way to play a lot of older Fire Emblem characters. It looks like it is a love entry to the series in terms of diehard Fire Emblem fans that love the older characters like Marth, all that good stuff. I think in the trailer you can see Lucina like in the art. So there's definitely going to be a lot of current Fire Emblem characters and older Fire Emblem characters in this new entry comes out I think January 28th is what they said. And they announced the collector's edition that's gonna sell out in two minutes. I really hope that Nintendo's not gonna put it on the website like they did with Xenoblade Chronicles 3. If that happens, nobody's gonna be able to buy it. Okay, so this one was already leaked uh, by Jeff Grubb. It Takes Two is coming out on the Nintendo Switch. I think they said November 4th. Looks kind of rough, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I was kind of surprised that this game was actually coming to the Switch. It's definitely like a Nintendo-like game, but graphics I was actually worried to see how this game was gonna come on the switch and I, it's been proven to me that I was right uh, Because EA they're not great at switch ports just being honest. They've not been that great uh, Their only good EA port out there was Plants vs. Zombies and I guess Apex Legends in some ways So uh, it goes to show that once again EA did not put in the time uh, That should have been for a game like it takes two to come on the switch because looks rough on the graphics Maybe they chose a higher frame rate. Uh, I'm I'm definitely gonna pick it up to give you guys my thoughts on it since I do a lot of videos on these third-party games. So I don't know if this is a new Fatal Frame game or not. I'm not I'm not into the series, but they showed off a Fatal Frame game that I believe they said it was coming to the West for the first time. So I don't know if it's one of the first games in the series or what the deal is with that, but that is coming the Nintendo Switch. They said a release date or not, I don't remember. Like I said, the flow of these games that they were announced was so weird because it was either they, they announce something huge and then they throw in a big anime game or a farming sim game where you couldn't process what was just shown off because the constant filler. There, there was a lot of filler here. Like a lot of this filler, I think it's going to be a lot of the reasons why people are, did not like this direct and won't get excited over something like a new Fire Emblem game being announced because the constant filler. GoldenEye is coming to the Nintendo Switch Online service. They showed off many other N64 games that's coming onto the service. I think GoldenEye was actually leaked a few months ago to be coming out on Xbox and Switch. So we're probably about to see the announcement of that coming to Xbox in a few weeks. I don't know if it's already been announced. So uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. Mario Strikers DLC got announced. You hear that? That's the amount of people that still play Mario Strikers. Nobody. Nobody. They showed off part of the Mario Kart Wave 3 DLC, uh, which I was kind of surprised that they just didn't want to go ahead and show all of it. I think they only showed like two courses, so yeah, it's coming out though. And then Nintendo Switch Sports is showing off that um, golf is coming, but it's getting delayed. Uh, I, I don't, I don't understand how that happened. Uh, I, I'm not a game developer. 
but Nintendo Switch Sports has to be one of the most disappointing developments in Nintendo Switch history because of what the game launched with and it's taken almost a whole year to get more content on there. That game could have been huge, but Nintendo fumbled the bag with that game. Okay, so this one, again, th I feel like this should have been a major big deal, but I couldn't get excited for this because of how it was announced. So Pikmin was shown off, Pikmin 4. But before they put Pikmin 4, they have Miyamoto go on like a five minute segment of, yeah guys, so Pikmin Bloom. The new Pikmin Bloom game, it's on your phone, go play it. Like, I feel like I should have been more excited for Pikmin 4, but I was stuck watching Miyamoto play Pikmin Bloom that my interest was gone. It was just filler, and I couldn't get excited for Pikmin 4, a game that I have been excited to play after playing Pikmin 3 Deluxe. I wanted more of the Pikmin series. I finally got that. But I couldn't get excited over the announcement. Like, like I don't know if I'm the only one that feels this way. But the filler, plus the anime, plus the farming simulator games, there was too much of that. The, the direct probably was just 20 minutes of anime, Square Enix, farming sim. But yeah, Pikmin 4 is coming out. They didn't show any gameplay. It's coming out next year. I am excited for that. It's just... Again, I don't know how to get excited for it because, or I know how to get excited for it. I just think I could have been more excited for it. It's just the, the flow of this direct, very strange. Bayonetta 3 was shown off. Uh, they didn't show too much on it. I think they just uh, dropped the gameplay trailer because they talked about how they were going to do that. So there's a Bayonetta 3 gameplay trailer out there. It comes out next month. Honestly, I need to finish the Bayonetta series so I can actually play Bayonetta 3. Dear God, I hope I can beat those games before Bayonetta 3 comes out. Okay, this one, this is funny. This game, so I, I have always said that this was coming to the Switch. Like, people called me crazy for saying that Cloud Gaming was going to come to the Switch at some point. Uh, because in case you guys don't know, okay, so we're talking about the Resident Evil games and how they announced that they're bringing like every single Resident Evil game to the Switch via the cloud. Now, what I have always been saying is that Resident Evil 7 was going to come to the Switch. I said that back in 2018 because I believe Resident Evil 7 is actually the very first cloud game on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, it came out in Japan in 2018. I'm like, guys, this is coming to the Switch. Call me crazy, but this is coming to the Switch. And I always predicted it in every Direct that that was going to be announced. And then it never happened. So I was like, oh, okay then. I guess cloud gaming isn't coming to the Switch. 2020 came out and we had uh, Control get announced for the Switch via the cloud. And now, obviously, we are here in 2020 and when cloud gaming was announced for the Nintendo switch they also uh, it, it got leaked that Resident Evil 3 was coming to the switch like literally the logo Resident Evil 3 cloud edition was shown off and uh, that was 2020 I was predicting that like every direct predictions video that that was gonna be there never happened here we are in 2022 finally gets announced and uh, yeah I mean I think it's fair that these are cloud games I mean these games look gorgeous so definitely gonna be a graphical downgrade if they can somehow get it on the Switch, I think it can be done, just takes a lot of development time that I don't think Capcom cares about. So it's cloud games, but I guess at least it's on here, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Okay, again, this was just randomly announced out of nowhere. Kirby Return to Dreamland remake is coming out on the Nintendo Switch February. Like they're literally showing off like a whole segment of third party games, and then boom, Kirby just gets shown off, and then everybody's like, huh? What? What happened here? I'm so confused. It was so random. This direct was random without it was announced. And I don't understand why we're getting a Kirby Return to Dreamland. Because it's like, we want to celebrate the Kirby anniversary. I'm like, bro, is it the Kirby anniversary in 2022? The Kirby anniversary is going to be done by the time Kirby gets announced or dropped on the Switch. Uh, it's coming out February 2022. Kirby Return to Dreamland. It, it was just so random. I don't think we need this game on the Switch. I think there are so many other cooler Wii games you could have brought to the Switch. And you chose this this one we have a good Kirby game already like put that amount of effort into Kirby in the Forbidden Forest or whatever the crap that or Forgotten Land I don't even remember that game's title but yeah that, that was so weird it was so weird Octopath Traveler 2 gotta be honest wasn't expecting that to be announced so soon considering the amount of 2d HD games that we've been getting on the switch but I guess it goes to show like I said in my live alive review we're gonna start seeing multiple 2d HD games come out every year because this engine is just kicking off it's gonna be the new thing so Octopath 
Pat Traveler 2 comes out the same day as the new Kirby game. I don't know what Nintendo's mindset was that one of those games was gonna fail, and I don't think many people care about this new Kirby game uh, because it's a remake that no one really wanted right now because the amount of Kirby games Nintendo keeps throwing at us. You know how many like five dollar eShop games we have for Kirby? I'm, I'm I'm done with the Kirby series right now. <laughs> I don't I don't want this. Who made the decision of Kirby? Anyways, Octopath 2 looks awesome. Definitely excited for that. I just need to beat Octopath Traveler, but it's great to see that the 2D HD games are coming out way more frequently. And then Zelda, Zelda Breath of the Wild 2. We don't have to call it Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 anymore. We finally have a title and it's called Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. That title is probably why we didn't see this direct aired in the UK live because of the Queen's passing. Yeah, I, I guess that's why Nintendo didn't air the direct, but it's here. They didn't show much. <laughs> we didn't get the Zelda remasters. Everybody in their leakers was like, Zelda remasters and Metroid Prime remake gonna be here. Get ready guys, we didn't see those here. But we saw Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom. We finally got a title. Apparently this title is like major spoilers and that's why Nintendo did not want to show off this title. But I'm still left clueless. Oh no, I think my camera's about to die. Oh gosh, is this the end? Hold on, are we good? Okay, all right. But Zelda got a release date of May 12, 2022. So guys, that's pretty cool. Uh, it's going to look great on Switch. We got a little bit of gameplay, but not too much. And I expect the collector's edition is going to be announced soon. And yeah, that's the direct. That Those were my highlights. I know there was a Tales of Symphony uh, remaster or something. I, I don't know about those games, so that's why I didn't show that off. I know that's something people are going crazy over though. So yeah, that's there if you guys are interested in that. It's no longer Breath of the Wild 2. I liked calling it Breath of the Wild 2 so much. Uh, the box art was also revealed. The box art, eh, I don't know if I like the box art. It, it feels, I don't know what it feels like, but it's coming out. I'm glad to see that it's finally coming out because everybody has been talking about it what feels to be so long. And yeah, it's coming, May 12th, stay ready. Uh, overall, the Direct, I think was just, I don't even know what to score because like there was stuff here but there was a lot of filler here. I'm also sad that it seems like they're officially not getting the Zelda remasters. Uh, it looks like that that doesn't exist which sucks. Um, I mean it has nothing to do with Nintendo since it was something that was never announced so you can't be disappointed about that. It just one of those so bad uh, the Metroid Prime remaster slash remake. I guess that doesn't exist. I don't know. Guess don't trust leakers anymore, guys. Don't trust leakers. But I guess I would give it like a six or a seven out of ten. That might be a little too generous. Like I don't know what to give it because I don't know if I've processed everything because I wasn't given a good way to process everything because of the uh, I don't know. I, I, it reminded me, honestly, kind of watching like a game awards, uh, like Jeff Keighley's game awards, where he throws so much at you, where you get so many big announcements, but there's so much filler there that you can't process. Wow, I just saw that actually get announced at the Game Awards. I, that's kind of how I feel. Like I feel like I just watched a Game Awards show and I uh, I can't process everything because there was just so much filler. Because you know, Jeff Keighley puts a lot of filler in his shows. I, this definitely felt like a Jeff Keighley show. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Is that a weird comparison? Let me know, guys. Let me know. Th that's how I'm feeling, though. Like, stuff was cool. We got really good stuff. It's just, I, I can't process it. <laughs> I don't think anybody else could process it. There was so much farming games. I mean, if you're a farmer, you're into farming games, this was for you. This direct was made for you. Also, if you're a Square Enix game, I feel like every other game was a Square Enix game being shown off. So yeah, I, I think... I think there's six or seven out of ten is what I'm thinking. Uh, I definitely want to know what you guys are thinking uh, in terms of what this direct had because I don't know. Am I being too negative? I I, I want to know because like we got Zelda. That's what we've been asking for. Breath of the Wild two, Tears of the Kingdom. That that that's what we wanted. We wanted that. When we got it. It's just like it doesn't feel like we got it because of how everything was. That's how I'm feeling with the direct. Let me know what you guys are thinking because I have been talking for way too much. Make sure to backslash that subscribe button, like the video. Share Check out my uh, Twitch, we were just streaming on there yesterday. Check out the Twitter, Instagram, podcast I'm a part of, all that good stuff, and the Discord server, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Ah oh, man, that sucked.